What's good? Welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk to you about this right here. This is a TLR camera. My specific one here is the Roliflex 2.8A. It's one of the original models and it's very old. So, you know, it lacks some functionality that a lot of the kind of follow-up models have, but I still love it. But this video today isn't specifically about this camera. It's about TLRs in general. And I want to tell you that you should go get one if you don't own a TLR already. TLRs are fantastic cameras and there's a bunch of benefits that I think you can enjoy from owning one. First and foremost goes without saying, honestly, these cameras are beautiful. They're time pieces, they're historical relics, and they're just very, very attractive. So, you know, I think part of why people like shooting film is that it puts you in a community, it gives you this aesthetic visually and also on your images. And I think in terms of gear, in terms of kind of um, gadgets and things like that, these cameras are basically second to none in terms of how beautiful and interesting and just kind of, you know, awe-inspiring they are. These cameras are, you know, very different looking from a lot of the other cameras that are out there, especially because of the two lenses. And then typically they all look very antique as well. So when you wear one around your neck, it really kind of adds a bit of, you know, dimension to kind of what you look like and your personality and that kind of thing. Of course, aesthetics aren't everything. You know, if you suck at photography, that doesn't matter whether you have a nice camera or not. But, you know, if you want to just have something that looks nice and you like looking at it and you appreciate its value as an object, then why not get a TLR? I think it's one of the cheaper ways to own something that's so beautiful in film photography without having to go nuts and spending all this money. Of course, there are really expensive TLRs out there, but there's a lot of cheap ones as well. So from that point of view, you know, it kind of speaks for itself. These cameras are just beautiful. Okay, so let's actually jump into kind of the mechanics and how you use these cameras and why that is something that adds value and is one of the reasons why you should get one of these cameras. I think one of the key things about TLR is this right here. You open up the top and that exposes the viewing glass. When you look down into your viewing glass, you can see basically almost an exact reflection of what your lens is looking at. So there's two lenses, there's the top lens, which is actually what you're seeing when you look down here. And then there's the bottom one, which is the one actually taking the image. Nonetheless, looking through this is a magical kind of thing sometimes, especially because you get that beautiful medium format look when your lens is wide open, but you see it in real time. You're looking through and you see this incredible image that, you know, it's just beautiful to look at. And you know, there's that cliche thing where you kind of take your phone and take an image of what you're seeing down there. And it's a cliche for a reason because it's really, really beautiful. So in creating images, you get to experience that and it's something you don't get to experience with a lot of other cameras. Um, so I think part of using this camera, part of the fun of it is actually looking down through here and focusing and then exposing your image. You kind of have that interaction with your subject and with the camera itself while creating the pictures. Another thing to point about these cameras is that typically they're very lightweight and also very quiet. This is not an exact rule because there are some TLRs out there that are actually quite heavy, but for the most part, a lot of the more antique ones, especially ones like this, are gonna be really light. You can wear one of these around your neck for a very long time, and honestly, it's not really gonna bother you that much. And then when it comes to traveling, if you wanna put one in your backpack or something like that, it's not gonna be such a burden compared to some of the other medium format cameras that you could potentially use. Of course, this isn't the lightest medium format camera, and it's definitely not the heaviest either, but I think for what you get, for all of its features and the fact that you can shoot medium format, it's a really nice package, and it's kind of the right weight. It's not too heavy, and it's not too light, it's just somewhere right in the middle. And in terms of sound, like I said, these are very quiet. Um, matter of fact, I'm gonna wind this one and just give you a bit of a hint. I don't know if it's actually gonna do it, but let's see. Yeah, so, you know, you can hear that in complete silence, and that was the sound that it made. But when you're out in the street, no one's gonna hear that. Um, you might not even hear it sometimes either. So if you're doing street photography or if you're doing some candid photography with this, it's a really nice thing to use. Or if you're just taking images in an area that's kind of quiet and you don't want to draw too much attention to yourself, that's a good one to you. Definitely recommend it for that. I think one of the things that is very interesting about TLRs and kind of how they're built and how you use them is that they're actually quite good for multi-purpose. Obviously, you can use any camera for anything. You know, you can do whatever you want. But I think this camera is nice because you can definitely use it for portraits. You know, typically you get a 3.5 or a 2.8 lens like what I have here. And that's beautiful for portraits. And the millimeters here for the lens is, this one's 80, some of them are 75. And that's a really nice focal lens to get, you know, a nice mix of kind of um, bokeh behind your subject, but also you don't have to be too far from your subject. You can kind of do both. And if you get up close, you can usually focus up to like uh, one meter, about three feet or so. Um, and if you move back a decent bit, you can probably get your full subject as well. So it's a really versatile kind of middle of the road um, focus distance for a lot of these lenses. And yeah, because of that, they're good for portraits. But because the camera's so lightweight, like I said before, and because it's so small and not really intrusive in any way, you can take it with you hiking, for example. You can take it with you on your street walks. You can do a lot of different things that typically you would need kind of a wider lens for um, and would involve kind of moving around and that kind of thing. Maybe if you're doing architecture in a city, the lens might not be ideal. Something wider would be better. 
But I think for landscapes and for most things that you would do outdoors in kind of an open area, this definitely could work well for you. Of course, you can't talk about TLR without talking about the square format. Um, this camera right here produces a six by six negative, and I think the vast majority of them do. Although I think I saw a mini TLR that did 35 millimeter negative. So, you know, I would say the vast majority, but I'm sure there's exceptions to that rule. But shooting six by six is pretty cool, um, especially because of the fact that you get more images than you would with some of the other medium format um, options that are out there. You know, there's six by seven, there's six by nine. Those are very popular because you get that giant negative and people love the giant negative. But I think six by six is a really beautiful kind of medium. There is six by four five with some other medium format cameras, but I don't believe there's any six by four five TLRs. There probably is something out there. Someone can correct me in the comments. But either way, shooting six by six not only affords you potentially more images, but it also kind of puts you in this creative box where it forces you to think creatively and use that kind of even square format to compose your images in interesting ways. So for people who shoot a lot of 35 millimeter or for people who've shot some of the uh, more classic like six by seven, six by nine, um, you know, this would be a very, very different change of pace. And then you combine that with the fact that when you're composing your image, everything is kind of inverted when you move your camera. All of that really forces you to slow down and to really pay attention to what you're fo focusing on in order to take an image. So I think from an experience perspective, if you really wanna change things up and kind of add a bit of, you know, something new to your experience in creating images, TLRs would definitely do that. It's a very different way of engaging with the camera, a very different way of holding it and looking at it from other most cameras. And therefore, this definitely could add a little bit of that spice into your workflow. So I think that's something that could benefit everyone and really help expand your mind as a photographer as well. Of course, we gotta talk about money. And I think the last thing I wanna talk about here is price. These cameras are kind of a big range in terms of cost. This one right here, for example, is very pricey. This is a very antique one. And I think because of that, it's valued. And it also has you know the really fancy Zeiss lens there that I think is very sought after. So this one probably goes for at least $1,000, 1,000 pounds, you know, some version of that but there's a lot of other cheaper ones, a lot of different brands as well. I think Roliflex seems to be kind of the, the big name when it comes to these TLRs, but you know, Yashica has a bunch of them as well. The 124G, that one is very popular and it's much cheaper than this. I think you'll probably get one for maybe 300 bucks. And you know, that's not extremely cheap, but for what you get, I think it's a fantastic price, especially if it's in good condition. But there's a whole bunch of TLRs out there. You know, people make TLRs for a very long time and a lot of different brands. So go online, just search for TLR, and you're gonna see a whole bunch of different things. What I recommend though, is that you find one that has a lens that's probably a F3.5 aperture. That'll be a nice kind of starting point, especially because you know if you're shooting kind of darker scenes, that might not even be enough. So you wanna, at the bare minimum, start there. But you know the holy grail with these TLRs is a 2.8 lens of any variety, and that might bring the price up a little bit. But the point is, you can start fairly cheap. So go out there, take a look, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, go to local camera shops, thrift shops. You'll be surprised what you're gonna find. And there's definitely a lot of good options that aren't gonna cost as much as this one. All right, y'all, talk to me in the comments. How many of you love using TLRs? I used to be a hater of TLRs. or not really a hater, but I used to not really think they were that interesting. And then I got this one from a friend and honestly, slowly but surely I got hooked. So I wanna hear about your experiences. Talk to me down below. All right, that's the video for today. If you enjoyed it, of course, go ahead and like the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. All right, y'all, I'm out.